Hello there, my fellow Xeno Hunters, and welcome back to a series that had a pretty long break lately, aka Deathwatch Lore. Today, I've decided to return to this series, for one, because there are still topics to be covered, but also because some time ago, I made a promise that I'd cover a specific topic from here. And this specific topic is related to the sacred relics of the Death Watch. I know you probably heard it a lot in my videos, especially Space Marine chapter videos, that this chapter and that chapter have this relic and that relic, and many of them ended up in the vaults of the Death Watch. So today, we are going to discuss just that, the many relics which are in the possession of the Death Watch. Word to the wise, unfortunately, almost all of these have no individual artworks associated with them, so I'll just have to use regular Death Watch artworks. My apologies. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Astartes Omnitool through the millennia, the Forge Masters of Watch Fortress Ariok worked to master and perfect the technology of the Death Watch, often creating devices far superior to those used in the Imperium at large. This is the case with the Omni Tool, an improved version of the ubiquitous Imperial Combi Tool. For all intents and purposes, the Omni Tool functions as a Combi Tool. The Omnitool is also specifically designed to repair bionics and servitors. The Adamantine Mantle These intricately worked cloaks take their name from the most common variation. Small adamantine scales worked into a protective yet flexible defensive covering. Similar personalized designs exist, all using unbreakable materials to form an impressive cloak. Each one is the labor of decades by master artificers, who temper every individual scale and thread for maximum resilience. Their work is blessed by the chaplain before finally being laid upon the shoulders of its first bearer. The mantle protects him not just through its physical strength, but also by making his movements more difficult to predict, as the opaque cloak whirls around him in combat. The Augury Malefica the Augury Malefica was crafted by the Techno Seers of the Grey Knights chapter. A heavily modified Auspex scanner, it is barely recognizable as the original device. Strange attachments have been added, subtle alterations have been made, and seven rituals of detection were performed to consecrate this augury. The result is a piece of equipment which can, with a reasonable degree of accuracy, detect the malignant auras of demons in the vicinity, and even, on rare occasions, predict an imminent warp breach. However, the augury's presence in the Death Watch vaults is not with the blessing of the Grey Knights, for they are entirely unaware that the Death Watch possesses it. Rather, they believe it lost at the hands of the foul word-bearers Chaos Space Marines, and have been actively seeking it for many years. It would be most detrimental for chapter relations should the item's reallocation be revealed. The Bane Bolts of Erixia Arch Magister Erixia spent her entire life in the search of the perfect bolt shell. She spent decades working with the Death Watch, perfecting not only the specialist ammunition of the chapter, but also the bolter clips which dispensed them. Though few in number, some of her finest creations are still extant, housed within ammunition clips cased in platinum. Whatever the nature of the foe, just one of Erixia's bane bolts, when delivered to the center mass, can slay its target in a moment. The Beacon Angelus The Beacon Angelus was devised to guide the Death Watch to the threshold of the alien adversary. Housed within a reliquary, the Beacon Angelus calls out to the Augur Arrays of the Death Watch, with the voices of a hundred electric cherubim. Its summons is so strong that it will draw the righteous onto its locale, regardless of what darkness may surround it. The Corroded Falchion 
This ornate, curving blade is a revered relic, which has seen countless centuries of service with the Death Watch. However, roughly 50 years ago, it was used against the encroaching swarms of High Fleet Dagon, and plunged into the toxic flesh of a venom throbe. After the battle, it was discovered that the bioacid of the Tyranid organism was eating into the blade, weakening its structure. Every attempt to cleanse the falchion and halt the corrosion have failed, for the acid had penetrated at a molecular level. So the chapter artificers have constructed a sheath which keeps the blade in stasis, as long as it remains inside. On rare occasions since, the falchion has been used in battle, and the ingrained bioacid has caused swift and horrific damage to its enemies. The Cruciform of the Crusade In the early days of the Achilles Crusade, there were many bloody battles to establish the Emperor's foothold within the Jericho Reach. In one such battle, a squad of battle brothers was dispatched to deal with the emergence of a chaos cult during the Argoth uprisings. In the course of the battle, the battle brothers were forced to make a stand in an imperial chapel, where they held their ground for several days. At one point in the fighting, a heretic rocket knocked the sacred Aquila down from the chapel spire. Enraged by this affront to the Emperor, one of the Battle Brothers dropped his weapons and hefted the eight-foot-tall stone cross and eagle on his shoulder, charging the heretic lines, instantly followed by his brothers, and ending the battle in less than an hour. Since then, the Aquila, known as the Cruciform of the Crusade, has been a relic of the Death Watch of the Jericho Rage. The cross may be carried into battle by a Battle Brother or by one of their followers. The Dominus Aegis This artifact takes the form of an ornate tower shield. When its edge is slammed down hard into the ground, it projects a hemispherical force field protecting all those within its reach from baleful energy. Carried to war by those kill teams expected to plunge into the heart of the Xenos horde, it has saved countless lives the bearer and his team fighting to victory as the dome-like force field keeps the worst of the alien scum at bay. The Fist of Dragos Brother Dragos battled with great success against the Orcs, the Eldar, and even Space Marine Renegades, always seeking out the most heavily armored targets to destroy personally with his combi melta and his mighty power fist. Battle wagons, graph tanks, and even dreadnoughts were added to the tally. However, Dragos was never satisfied with the performance of his war gear. After every engagement, he would return to the chapter forges and besiege the tech marines to make adjustments and modifications. The tech marines protested that such tinkering would offend the machine spirits, but given Dragos' victories in the field, his wishes were usually granted. His obsession was finally ended when his overcharged Meltagun exploded in his hand as he was attacking an Orc Dreadnought. His Power Fist, however, was recovered intact along with his mangled body. The Firestorm multi melta Created millennia ago by a forgotten Death Watch Tech Marine as a field modification of a damaged Maxima pattern multi melta Firestorm multi meltas trade higher energy consumption and shorter range for higher damage yield, and the ability to fire in a short burst. Although modifications of this kind are typically frowned upon by the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Death Watch Tech Marines of the Watch Fortress Ariac have received special dispensation to perform this operation on limited numbers of existing weapons. The Glorious Standard the Adeptus Astartes have a history of many proud and glorious victories. They stand for the might of the Emperor and his triumph over his foes. The Glorious Standard recounts this legacy in a complex pattern of images and heraldry, from the carnage and fire of the Horus Heresy, through the first clashes with the Tyranids to their current exploits. A battle brother carrying the Glorious Standard becomes a rally point for the Astartes infusing them with the righteousness of the Emperor. The Crixian Chain Glaive 
The Crixian chain glaive combines the power of a long, curved, two-handed blade with the rending teeth of a chain weapon on its cutting edge. The design was produced secretly during the Keflan 9 Techno Schism by an unsanctioned forge complex in the Crixis system. The templates were subsequently declared unsound and removed to Adeptus Mechanicus stasis vaults. This is thought to be the last actual example surviving. Plasma Gun 438 The weapon denoted 438 in the Death Watch Armory vaults is a plasma gun of ancient pre-heresy design. It has a noticeably different muzzle casing than that of the later patterns and exposed cooling ducts. While the gun is undeniably a powerful weapon, its provenance is entirely unknown. As such, many of the Death Watch refuse to contemplate its use, for fear it has been in the hands of heretics and traitors. The Platian Tome The Platian Tome was created by a senior tech priest of the Adeptus Mechanicus, as a portable font of certain archives, templates, and pieces of ancient lore. Even to a trained eye, the information is a seemingly random collection, with no easy means of navigation, and so it takes much study to gleam anything relevant to a particular task. Indeed, only those with a wide knowledge of machine spirits and engine lore have any hope of understanding the information contained within. However, those with the patience and the appropriate skills can find great secrets within this data core. The Death Watch Relic Blades a standard power sword is no better than a flimsy metal spike in the humbling aura of a relic blade. Remembrancer works from the Horus Heresy depict these magnificent power weapons in the hands of their heroes, and accounts can be found through the ages of how their wielders turn the tides of many battles. Few enough have survived the millennia, and only a precious handful of those are reserved for use by the Astartes of the Death Watch. Relic blades can take many forms, but are always a great weapon of some fashion. They require two hands for even a space marine to wield. Most relic blades have been in the service of the Imperium longer than the watch fortresses that maintain them. Some predate even the Horus Heresy, originally wielded by the first and most powerful of the space marines, only to be passed down to the founders of the Death Watch at the dawn of the Imperium that exists today. It is seen as a fitting tribute to those ancient heroes of forgotten times that these giant powered weapons are still used to defend humanity to this day. The Redemption of Saint Sulloch A Death Watch kill team posted to the isolated colony of Saint Fullock was caught up in the fighting when an orc raiding force attacked. Delaying their extraction and the completion of their mission, the Space Marines chose to join the defense. Brother Frosius, a devastator from the Imperial Fist chapter, deployed in the highest tower of the Imperial Shrine with his favored heavy bolter, while the others remained below. Thanks to the devastating bursts of accurate fire from the tower, the orcs were defeated, but not without the loss of the rest of the kill team. Upon his return to Watch Fortress Ariok, Frosius was severely censured for his decision to stay and fight. To this day, the heavy bolter remains a symbol of honor, but also of disregard for orders. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the relics of the Death Watch for today. Do any of these appeal to you? Do you know of any other Death Watch artifacts? or maybe some that you made up on your own for your own games? Let me know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you want to help me keep this channel alive, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you a great day. The Emperor Protects.